so no we we got invited there to um by the dude from real tune uh casual he invited us over there to listen to this one guy um I uh what's his name h1 something like that he, he he's out of milwaukee and uh he was having like a, some listening session for his album or some music um and so we just went over there but it was it was called kfi kfi studios I think it's like right off of 75. Yeah. I think it's like we're over that area. I feel like I heard of it, but I don't, I don't know. I don't yeah. want to claim it. <laughs> yeah. I'm finding out it's a lot of studios in Dallas, man. Oh, yeah, it is. I, for sure. I, 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 I thought it, it was. Too. I thought I didn't think it was that many studios. Yeah. I really didn't. Like nice studios. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're talking about like uh, visually or for uh, recording or both? For recording. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's some ducked off little spots, man. Yeah, for sure. Um, I learned that probably two years ago. I was mm. like, okay, it's a little bit more than what I thought was yeah. out here. <laughs> yeah. I like I met more people that do music and do things at a different level too, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know this was a spot to go to, and I'm just like, okay, mm. so it's, a, it's a little thing going on. Yeah, I really, I really want to. Uh, you had a Patch Studios, right? In yeah. uh, Atlanta. Yeah patchwork I, I really want to create something like that you know what i mean i've never been there now but i i've heard of yeah i've never so been I, there I either what, oh, okay i'm like i don't know what is all in there or nothing like that yeah i've never been in there either but i from i follow the guy uh curtis that's the owner of the um, the building of patchwork yeah i follow him and even i found out he's from carson california which is down the street from where i grew up you know what i'm saying and he got this studio in Atlanta, and that's where all the major artists now, like, they, that's where their records came out of. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. So. Yeah, I saw um, Patchwork on, um, I was watching Rhythm and Flow. You heard of that show, Rhythm and Flow? On Netflix? Yeah. Yeah. When I was uh, watching it, I think it was two years ago, as, as they said where they were, like, studios, I wrote them all down, because I'm like, I see what's going on, like. If I know the name of these studios that they're working in, the people that you can run into working within that space look like it's these type of people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I wrote down Patchwork. I wrote down, like, it's like seven or eight of them, I think, from mm. the from the series. And I was taking notes as I was watching it. Like, I was watching it for the entertainment, but I was, like, looking at where they going, the places they be. I'm mm. like, I bet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so and then I went and looked at all of them on social media after I had... Uh, did that. And I looked at the producers too. Like it was an episode where they got to work uniquely, like with a producer to make a song. Mm -hmm. And like that's how I found like trap addicts and like I. It was different people. I'm like, oh okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm putting yeah. pieces together right now. That's smart, man. That's yeah. super smart. That's super <laughs> smart. I know. Um, uh, the guy Curtis. He just put. They have a um a documentary that he just put out. I think it's just on YouTube of 25 years of a recording studio in Atlanta and all the songs that have come out of that studio um they have like it's a full documentary on YouTube about patchwork and how it came I think they I I want to say that it is the 25 year anniversary so they've been in existence 25 years and I was just thinking the amount of music if you just think about 25 years of Atlanta music that came out of, the, of Atlanta most of those were recorded in patchwork, I would assume. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like they got a long history. Yeah. And people that's not even from Atlanta that stopped through while in Atlanta, like it's probably a lot of hits. Yeah. And uh history there. You know I what spoke I'm I spoke to the dude on the phone. Um, I did like a little consultation with him on the phone, dude Curtis. And it it wasn't it wasn't um it wasn't nothing major. But just to be able to to connect with him and talk, you know what I mean, and ask him like how he built his studio, and he kind of gave me some gems on like how studios should be built to to create the best sound, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. While you in the studio, and I was like, oh, okay, that's dope. He was like, you got the sound should be curved or the the walls should be curved in there. It shouldn't be like no straight lines like a regular room. Yeah. He was like, nah, make it curve so that way you know the the sound has somewhere to go and it's not just bouncing off of in the corners where that's where I guess where the sound can be stuck at or something in the studio. He got this down to a sound. Yeah. yeah. Use the engine unless he is some type of engineer or. I don't even know. Uh, I don't know what, what his what music background is. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Man, let's get into this, man. We got Trey Low in the building. What's happening, man? What's good with it, man? Chilling, man. Um, you got a, you you had a project that just dropped, man. Um, uh, what is it called? What was what's the album called? Uh, it's like a mixtape, an EP. Bo- okay, it's bottom of the map though. Bottom of the map. Okay, what's the, what's the meaning behind the name? Just. I'm from the bottom of the map, man. It's uh, it's not that deep, really. Okay. <laughs> like okay. I'm from Louisiana, man. There's no states under Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? It's just the bottom of the map, mm. and uh, it was just inspired by the bottom of the map um, music. Like when I say that, I mean when Wayne used to say, you know, bring it back to the bottom of the map. He from Louisiana too. Mm. Uh, Jeezy got a song called "Bottom of the Map." Like the feeling of those songs at the time and what they were talking about and, and everything. I just wanted to make something that kind of felt like old music, old hip hop stuff that I appreciate and listen to today. And it's not being made, so I just took it upon myself. Like if I want to hear something like that to ride to, I guess I got to do it. That's kind of my approach to life. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. well, if they ain't gonna do it, I guess I got to do it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> if nobody yeah. else gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man, I I heard one song um off the album. I guess before it dropped, um, the one you did with Lil Lil Flip. Yeah. How you get him to get on the song, man? How did you how did you get Lil Flip out of out of his little leprechaun, uh, <laughs> how you get him to get on the album? Uh, through a resort, like uh, through somebody I know, like mm. they put that together for me because they have a relationship with him and they've been working with him, and so I went through somebody I know that um, helped me out with it and hit him up and got us connected pretty quick, got it done pretty quick. That's just kind of how that worked. Mm, okay. You know? When I heard the beat, I thought of, uh, I don't know if you got to really pay attention to my verse but um i speak about like growing up being influenced by houston like paul wall chameleon f flip mm-hmm. all them so my thought process on the song when i immediately heard the beat was like dang this like remind me of houston and that old feel mm-hmm. which is to me they from the bottom of the map too so it all encompassed that that same concept that i was trying to get across you know what i'm saying so and i was influenced by that that's stuff that i still ride to today like i'm still bumping them <laughs> you know yeah. what i'm saying and so uh when i heard it i never thought that i would really get the people i was naming in the song on the song you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying because i mentioned him chameleon uh, zero bun b you know what i'm saying so i ain't i would thought there was a reach before before it happened you know, you know what i'm saying I, you know i think who would have been Maybe a little better. Or I don't even know if you could have got him um, better. I yeah, think it, I think flip deliver. But I, I imagine you're gonna say chameleon there. No, what for real? No, I wasn't gonna say <laughs> that, chameleon there. That was my first thought. Really? Yeah, I was trying. I was like, this might Dang. be a stretch though. No, no, no. <laughs> What's the, uh, boss hog? Oh, slim thug. Slim thug. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'll fit on that. That's too. what I'm I, saying. All of them will. Yeah, yeah. You know all of saying? them will. All of them will fit. But I'm like. I could hear, I could hear uh, Slim Thug on there. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm open to it. You know, speaking on up, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, come on. Slim. I will say, I will say, like, and this ain't this ain't no shot to you. I, I, as far as dope verses, I would say Flip, the other dude, and then you on the on the verses. For real, for that song. Yeah. No, no, right. you know what I'm saying. It's your opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. Yeah, I was like, okay, Flip did deliver. He did. And um, what's the other guy that's on the album? Ad Green. Yeah, Ad oh, Green. On that song. On oh, that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. He I'm, really took it back to how it felt back then, like the freestyle Houston. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was dope too and unique because you don't hear that no more in songs. And I feel like he did it well within within the song. Yeah. So I, I, I look at it, man. I don't even take offense if somebody had a heart of. It's a reason that I picked who I picked. Like when I put a song together, I take pride in the whole song. Mm-hmm. So if you like, man, flip went harder. Da 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 da. I did a good job. Like I, I selected who I thought would be a good. Yeah, but fit. you can't be getting out rapped on your own song, though. Well, this is one opinion. So, okay. So you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you ask me who did the best verse. It won't be the same answer. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm okay, saying? So yeah. that's kind of how I look at it. And I don't, you know, I take, I, I really don't, 
I don't look at it as a competitive thing. When I'm on a song, it's about putting together a good song. I, I said what I wanted to say, and it was more storytelling. Mm-hmm. I feel like Flip took it. He, he played with words a little bit more and made it more fun, too, with it, with some of the stuff he was saying. And, you know, that's what he decided to do with it. Mine was more storytelling, reminiscing, going back. And just talking, so yeah. it was real life. I went, I went competing for the best verse, to, so to say. I was just talking some real stuff. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, because um, I think, I think, I think it's the hook that you say. You remember going to Granny House or something like that, or something about Granny. Um, the verse that was the verse. Um, oh, well, I mean, I flipped just this. I, yeah, I, I remember you saying something of that nature. Some I was when like, she used to make sweet, sweet potato pies. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back when she used to make them. Yeah, I was like, this sound like, this would be a good dope summer, um, summer banger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Man, oh, yeah, this sh- man brought me on his show and told me I had the worst verse. Come on, listen, man. man I got, I got, I got to keep it real with you, man. I'm yeah. telling you, like, like I want. Like, here's my thing. My thing is never to discourage, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, but you know what I mean. Like, if I, if I want, if I'm gonna keep it real with you and be like, yo, man, you probably didn't have the strongest verse on there. It's, it's, it's not a um, to discourage. It's a challenge. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I want niggas to be better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not, it's not like a, like a. I'm just hating or I'm dissing. I'm saying, yo, step your bars up. It, it's nothing wrong. Even, even with like with basketball. But you, you, did you play sports, hoop, or anything? Yeah, I played football. Okay, okay. So in, in the sports thing is like, yo, come on, let's, let's go. You know what I'm saying? It's not like a. Like a thing I'm trying to diss or, or yeah, hate yeah, or something, yeah. you know what no, I'm saying? No, I was just making a joke. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Just because you did it, I'm cool. Okay. Yeah, I don't be taking that type of stuff personal, man. I know that that's very, uh, what is it, subjective? Yeah. Uh, on who think what about what and a song. Okay, you know, all right. Line, um, line me up with the best of them where the intent is to drop bars and I can show you. You know what I'm saying? I th- I, ain't that ain't that the well? No, no, that's not. That's not the object the on on on, no, on every man. song. No, no. Sometimes it's it's to deliver a message, man. Sometimes it's to make you feel a certain way. Like, I mean, I write songs for R and B people, country, sing, like artists as well. So I, I'm I'm like a, a different type of artist, I guess, like more creative. Mm-hmm. And so everything ain't about dropping bars. Sometimes it's about getting a message across, creating a, a conversation. Making you think about something, it just depends. But you know isn't I mean? isn't like um, I would say rap isn't it competitive? It, it just in nature, right? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I have songs where I, I get competitive and I pop my my chops a little bit, you know. But uh, that's not every song. That's all I'm saying. Okay. And even if I get a feature, in my mind, every time it's not like, man, I gotta go harder than this, like harder than this person. Now, if I get on their song, then I will probably. Thinking so why I, that's the, like maybe that's the confusing part to me <laughs> because if they on your song you want you don't want them to outshine you right well how I look at it and 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 maybe this is an understanding that most people don't have when you create a song I'm the reason for the song right so in my opinion they can't outshine me on my song because like even if they contribute to making it a big hit. It, without me, we don't have the concept. You don't have the mindset to talk about what you're talking about, to say how you're saying it. I influenced everything you're doing, my boy. So thank you. But thank me too, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, that's 100. <laughs> and, and so and that's, that's my mindset. You know what I'm saying? And I, anybody I choose, you know what I'm saying, if it's, yeah, most of the time, anybody I choose is, is to make the song better. Like, that's the intent. I want them to go hard. And if somebody feel, if they fans feel that they go harder than me, especially, that's fine. It's fine. Just go play the song, man. Buy that whole too while you at it. Yeah. You know I, I'm not even a, a Lil Flip fan. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I've I've heard his music back in the day, but I'm not like a, a Lil Flip fan like that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I would just think, like, if they if i'm asking them to get on my song like i want to put my bars up against their bars you know what i'm saying oh, no. and then challenge myself <laughs> at the same time you know what i'm saying that's stressful man think about if I, every time i work with somebody i hear their verse then i want to go back i ain't finna do that i wrote it from my heart up at this time in life when i'm writing it's from my heart so like 
whatever I said is what I said, what I meant. <laughs> if somebody come in and they go hard. So how do you get better then? Um, how do you get better without? Because the only, the only way I know with, in sports, right, the only way you get better is you play with better competition, right? And the way you play with, the way you get better is putting yourself next to somebody who is elite or somebody who is better than you to, um, to challenge yourself. How do you get better with making music or making better making songs if you putting those people next to you, your verse next to you, their verse next to yours, but you just like, I'm gonna just take it easy on this one. All right, let's uh let's let's correct this. Okay. So it's never take correct it, it's never take it easy on this. Okay. What you know, it's just depending on what the message is, is getting the the concept across. Uh, as far as like getting out the second part to this, <laughs> the getting better part, uh, I listen to different people that talk about different things. Um, I listen to different genres of music that I try to incorporate uh, certain sounds and certain ways I deliver things. As far as far as that nature, um, as far as bars, man, I, I actually don't intentionally try to get better. I think. I'm a person that rap real life my experiences, man. So as experiences come by, um, I just find a way to to, de to deliver them creatively mm -hmm. in, in a sense. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to be the best uh, if we being real. Now, I do think wholeheartedly I can compete with the best at the most elite level. If you put me in the room with any major artist that you name, I can deliver with them. I'm 100% certain of that. And I can deliver up to their status of what you're saying. But as far as like competing, I'm more like, let's collaborate. If you go hard, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But don't get it twisted, man. If the objective, if we had to go in the room, come out with the hardest bars and that's my assignment, yeah, I'm, I think that I'll come out on top in a lot of such on that song with those artists too. And that's no disrespect to them. I'm a fan of flipping Eddie Green. But if you ask me, they definitely can't out rap me. Mm. Like that's just how they that's how they go, you know. With all due respect, you know, yeah, what I'm saying? respectfully, yeah, 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 respectfully. respectfully. They, like, yeah. they can't out rap me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Who else is on the album? Who else? Uh, what other features you got on the album? Um, I have Menace, a uh, guy from my town, uh, city. Uh, her name Menace Life. Okay. Um, and that's it. The per the singer on that same song, she don't like to be put out for for being an artist. Like she just can sing she's somebody we know cool with but she don't want to be known yeah yeah like she's not a an artist like she's not an aspiring artist she just like you, can know, sing. you know you know your cousin uh she can sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 you like hey she you like hey uh you know get on this for me and she's like yeah do i have to be in the video no, i don't want to be in the video i don't want to do nothing <laughs> i just want to you know what i'm saying i'll do this for you but i don't want to be noticed for it you what? know what i'm saying so that's the only features though. You know, really? Menace Life, Flip, AD Green, and her. Yeah. Really? That's that's crazy. She don't want to be known. Nah. She what don't song? Be. What song is she on? It's called Hustler State of Mind. Okay. Hustler State of Mind. Okay. All right. Are you gonna shoot any videos for the for the songs? Yeah. Bottom of the. I mean, I said bottom of the mouth. Win or lose is a video that's out already. Um, that's from that project. And then I'm gonna do one thing with Flip and AD Green. Okay. Um, and I might do Hustler State of Mind. I don't know yet, but I'm gonna do one thing for sure with Flip and AD Green. And okay. I already got one done. Okay. All right. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. And you know what? Um, on on uh, another note, I learned a little bit more about you just doing my research, like. You're not just a entrepreneur in the in the music field, like you got your hands in a little bit of everything outside of music. Can you can you share with the people what a, um what are the things that you in as far as like entrepreneurship? Yeah, um, a trucking company. I okay. Have a trucking company. Um, I just do mortgage loan originating. That's not an entrepreneur thing, but you know. Those are the, the things musically, like everything I do with music and a trucking company, man. I mean, I got my hands in 
stocks and stuff too but you know yeah. that's not really i don't know if you call that entrepreneurship or investing or whatever but i'm in i'm in that you know what i'm saying I'm how'd you get in, how'd you get into trucking um meaning who told me about it or what do yeah you mean? like well like how did you even learn about it how did how did it even come into your into your little space where you even um wanted to know more about it like how did you even buy your first truck like what made you even get into in, get into it in the in the beginning in the first place? Um, learning about, uh, I'm gonna say more about investing. Really, it's it all stemmed from my interest in investing and okay. making sound investments. Okay. So I guess in a sense we can say financial literacy. Okay. Um, and I follow um, Market Mondays and uh, Earn Your Leisure and Wall Street Trapper and Ian Dunlap and like all these people and that i listen to daily like when i go to the gym i don't listen to music i listen to financial stuff and uh and le- and i read books like i'm a reader as well so what's the last book you read or what's the book you read now uh right now i'm going through think and grow rich um and uh, i have another book called never split what? the difference man i'm reading that right now too oh for real yeah how you, how you feel about that one I mean, I like it. I be trying some of the stuff. That, I be trying some of the um, some of the techniques that he talking about in the book. Yeah. I'm like halfway through it. Yeah. Um, I think it's dope. I, I almost went to a. Um, he had a conference out here not too long ago. Chris Voss. Yeah. Oh, dang, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't had, know that though. <laughs> yeah, cause I I I signed up for his um his emails that they do every Tuesday. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I signed up for that, so that's how I find out about it. I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah, oh, I'm on the spot. Learning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you go to the website, you can sign up for the, and they just give you like every Tuesday they'll send you email with like little little tidbits, little tips on on how to communicate and talk to and negotiate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And, uh, okay. I just got put on some something new. Um, I'm gonna get called the. Uh, I think it's called the. Uh, the trading zone is like mm. option. Tra- it's day trading the stocks. Oh, okay. So it's like a stock, a trading book. You know oh, what I'm okay. And yeah. So just stuff like that, man. And as I watch more of it, they talk about investments. You know, you hear about real estate, of course, and then you hear about what else can make money, cash flow, like having a monthly cash flow. And trucking is one of the things you, you hear about. And I thought about, as I was hearing that, my grandpa was a trucker. Mm. Uh, so... And I have cousins that drive trucks and people, or frat brothers that drive trucks, so uh, or that that drove and own. You know what I'm saying? One of the guys I talked to about, you know, building, growing, and what he doing and what he do with stocks and how he living. He actually encouraged me. He had, he played a big role too, and, and he encouraged me. He was like, "Yeah, man, what you should do, shit. If I knew this earlier, before I got into real estate, before I got these multifamily properties." man you should get it trucking like that's where you're gonna get that that uh monthly cash flow like mm. that's where you're gonna fill it the most and so just knowing that you know i had i shifted my my goals and what i was trying to do to set myself up to get the truck like saving paying myself a certain amount every month till i got to the desired amount to to start operating you know what mm. i'm saying yeah and that's kind of how that worked how many, how many trucks do you got in there now? Uh, one, but uh, I guess it's on the verge of none, maybe, because it's, it just got into an accident. Oh, damn. And so, you know, fortunately, the driver walked away and was able to walk out of it. But it was, uh, I think it's pretty bad, so they might total it out. We're going through the claims process right now. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I got... um. But yeah, started with one and trying to scale, you know, as, as we grow, you know. I mean, yeah. as, as we go, grow as we go. Yeah. You, know what I'm you ever heard of um, a, a lady by the name of the Trucking Guru? Yeah. Yeah, she's coming on the podcast soon. I want to hear how she got into that because she like a millionaire from doing dispatching trucks. Yeah, that's money in dispatching too. Is it? Yeah, yeah. It's money in. So yeah, people think that, uh, or oftentimes what people associate with making money with trucking is having a truck and being a truck driver or running a truck but like hey, the brokers make money dispatcher make money you know as an owner operator you have to pay all those people oh i'm not an operator 
Oh, I mean, as an owner. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got to pay uh, factoring. You got to pay um, dispatcher. You gotta pay for the driver. You know what I'm saying? Pay you pay the driver? I mean, I of course the driver. The driver. Yeah, yeah, pay the driver. He don't get like a like a fee off of, of what he's going to uh Yeah, yeah. He get a percentage. Oh, okay. You know, okay. we do per- percentage, but, you know, that, that still come out of the, the gross income. You know what I mean? How did you so? How did you even find a truck? What was that process like? Uh, <laughs> asking people. I know. Yeah. I know. Like, I'm very resourceful, man. Like, okay. I know a lot of people who do a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And so reaching around and doing some self research, going online to look to myself, um, and the help of like my partner as well. And so we just kind of did it that way and we ended up going to Houston to, to get the truck like it was, it was a truck right down the relatively right down the street when you mm. think about trucking or where you can get trucks from yeah and how'd you find the driver uh through friends like a like if I know you you got a brother that's how it was like a Dante, it's Dante brother he, he'll drive you know what I'm saying mm. so that's kind of how that worked yeah so I know people we know a lot of people I guess that could see benefit in an opportunity like that and so especially with the money that could come with it and so and 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 what they're doing might not be that same type of opportunity because of it could be criminal records it could be things like that so and that's kind of honestly the approach that i have with it's kind of taking people who how the corporate world will look at them like oh I, we can't do too much with this so you'll be stuck at a certain type of job yeah and being able to to free them up, give them some freedom, and and actually uh, help along the way. I make myself very accessible as far as like what you do with your money as well, like things that I think would be wise, mm-hmm. things like that, just to try to help in every way that I can. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And we, I'm very transparent about the business. Like I make sure, you know, we make sure that we disclose operating costs, things like that, so that you mind for when you're moving this what's at stake you know yeah, what i'm saying how yeah. much we put into this what it costs you know what i'm saying how you gonna get the best uh profit as well how you gonna get paid you know if you're moving efficiently mm. it's how it can work and if you're thinking while you're moving and you making the most of every hand you shake in every warehouse you stop at or every place you go and you're asking people questions how you do this where you do this y'all looking for dedicated lanes like if y'all pay if i go from dallas to this every day like just kind of, uh, kind of instilling certain qualities for building. You mm, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And learning, like learn. Look at the dispatching board. Like learn everything. The more you know, the more valuable you are, nigga. The more money you make. The more money you bring us, the more money you make, my guy. Yeah, you know what I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. kind of how it work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was I was thinking about getting into it. Um, I was thinking about probably getting like two trucks. Um, but them goddamn trucks is expensive, man. <laughs> this is, this no. trucks is expensive, man. No, that's the next part that people you know, <laughs> they, they be, uh, get into the trucking industry. Like, yeah, you're going to have to have a little bit of something put aside or can get funding or investors. People use investors, man. I've learned that now that I'm here. A mm. lot of the times people got investors, man. Yeah, somebody who don't want to do it, but they got the bread to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They don't want to put the work in to do everything that have that you have to do to maintain a trucking company. Yeah. But like I got this much money to put I can get a truck and how much I'm gonna make if you just get a driver, do this and give me my money on the back end. Yeah. Like it's uh, see I was thinking about like one I was thinking about one getting the eighteen wheeler, um just getting it financed, right? Getting two eighteen wheelers financed, but I was like, shit, that's a hundred thousand dollars or more just to get that. And if, if if the truck get um get into an accident or something, I'm like I'm fucked. So I was like, what about hot shot trucking? I was thinking about that, cause you know the, I don't know. Um, I seen um, Bruce. You know uh, uh dang, what's Brewster's first name? Huh? Um, boss. Boss. <laughs> I saw him on the plane. Yeah, yeah, you saw him on a plane? Yeah, really? Sure was, yeah. Oh, that's dope. Um, so. Um, Brewster, he does a he's a trucking guy as well. And I was thinking like, what if I get two 
two Durango trucks, you know what I mean? 2,500 uh, Durango trucks. Those are probably like 40, 50,000 each. You know what I'm saying? I could put I could put a down payment on those and get two of those and just do some little hot shot just to get my foot in the door. But I was like, do I have the time to invest in that? Finding the drivers? How do I figure out, you know, trying to get them, um, uh, I guess, loads. loads, you know what I mean? I was like, it's it's a lot, you know what I mean? It's a lot that, that you got to go into trying to figure that side out, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm always intrigued and, and like, somebody figured it out, you know what I mean? At least get the one in there, you know what I mean? So I'm always want to learn, like, okay, how did you figure all this out? How did you put all these? Because I feel like I, I have something... I was listening to somebody and they was like, you got to get an authority. I'm like, what the hell is an authority? What What is an authority? Uh, you- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's basically um, being authorized to use your vehicle commercially and make trips uh. within state and out of state. So uh, some if you don't have one, you have to work under somebody with an authority in DOT. And they usually charge you for that. Mm. Like a certain percentage, but I have an authority. Oh, okay, and authority is that just the the DOT number that's on the side of the door when you, no. um, that number? Oh, no, no, that's a that's a DOT number. Oh, okay, that's yeah, the MC number. You you won't see it on the truck usually. Okay, MC numbers don't have to be. Um, that's at least that's not what my compliance officer told me. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So MC numbers, you you probably wouldn't see it. That's something that. Just some paperwork um, on we some? use, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you get uh, dealing with uh, brokers and stuff like that, uh, so that they know how you, how long you've been in business, like a lot come with all that. You okay. What What's your authority? How long you've had the authority? How long you've been operating a trucking business? Um, kind of like your track record of your trucking business. Gotcha. Things, things of that nature. Gotcha. Yeah. Now, is the is the trucking is it funding the music? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Um, trucking i would say right now i haven't broke it uh i'm new to it okay i would say this year you know what i'm saying okay. early this year but this year uh i haven't even broke even from um everything i put out to get the trucking because you it's a learning process as you said mm-hmm. it's gonna cost you some money up front you're gonna have a little bit of hold ups here and there and so that's the case and currently you know it's it's wrecked mm. just like i was telling you so um, no, nah, it's not funding nothing right now. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's get, taking me back, supposed to be trying to take me back to, to green. Really? You know yeah. I'm in the red like a bug. God, <laughs> leave it, God. Yeah. Leave. But you know, it, it takes money to make money. Uh, and that's so, that's something else I learned through all the, the financial people and um, all the stuff that I follow, all the books that I've read, man. Like, when you take a risk, it just you can't have an emotional relationship with money, man. So it's, you know, so I took it to the chin. I live every day still gratefully. Mm-hmm. Honestly, that I'm able to take a loss like what could, could happen here and keep moving and function and not be in a, a spot where I don't know if I'm going to have a place to live. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, I look at it as, like, fortunately, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm in, I'm in a grateful position. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just thankful. Really, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like everybody can't, everybody don't last in trucking, and everybody can't get through certain things. You know, they tell you that when you start. Like I had very transparent people around me. Like a uh, trucking company, on average, man, like they don't last. So you know. Yeah, I heard it's risky, man. I heard it's mm-hmm. risky, and because of accidents, and you know what I mean, mm-hmm. from going across country. Where did you um, where did you get all this from? Like. I mean, cause you seem like you seem like a, a like a pretty thoughtful dude. You know what I mean? Like you always think out. Okay, let me plan this out first. A, B, C, and this is what it's gonna look like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have you always been like that? Oh, uh, yeah. For the most part, actually. You know what I'm saying? Since like football and, and high school and stuff, man. Like I had a a desired result that I wanted and I, I did things differently than the people at my school and my results was different. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I was end up being like a better player, essentially. How you know so? What, what, what do you mean? Uh, what, what, I mean what, like, what, like what? I mean, I broke records at my school. Mm. Like I was a receiver. And okay. Like, um, you know, so I was a top receiver in the state in my years of playing. You know, 
Oh, so that's that's what I mean by that. You know what I'm saying? Like I was a. What What were you doing different though? Oh, I mean studying. Like um, it's crazy, man. I was just talking to somebody about this. Where I think Hard Knocks training camp had was kind of recent, like recently started in like 2000, maybe 10 or nine or something. Mm-hmm. Probably 09 or eight. And it was like the Bengals hard knocks or something, and like Chad Johnson was on there, and I liked him. And so we had DVR. Man, I watched his practice through hard knocks training camp, rewind it, look at his steps, look at his releases. I would go practice him. Uh, anytime I watch a football game, receiver score a touchdown, I'm telling my dad, man, uh, rewind it. I'm getting the remote rewinding it, looking at the route, looking at what he's doing, looking at stuff like that, and I'm going outside of practice and outside of normal hours and and doing that i'm doing 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups a night after workouts after school every every day uh, on saturdays i'm at the school i'm pulling the sled i'm running with the sled i'm running routes to a point to where the team follows me and they like all right everybody we need to do what trevor doing let's go participate with them because it's uh, i'm pretty sure what you can start saying when you day in and day out with that type of consistency is a separation amongst average and the ones so mm-hmm. to say so to say you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and uh doing that and doing certain catches a uh, certain amount of catches a day a certain amount of touches like stuff like that man that's what separate people that daily input you know what i'm saying yeah and so i learned early on uh, fortunately like what happens when you when you think for when you got a vision when you create a plan to get there and what it looked like to successfully completed and when you get that feeling and when you accomplish those things and have a sense of accomplishment and a pattern of doing it really you can't nobody tell you nothing like whatever you want you just go get it because i understand that i can devise a plan and execute it step by step put it together and as long as i have the will and determination to do it as each step get checked off i'm in here and like that's just how my life worked. I developed that early enough to be almost 30 now, man. And it's just a beautiful mindset because people don't understand most of the time. Yeah. I even said it in a song on one of these things. What if I tell you I'm a genius and most people don't understand the way I think or look at things. So I got the upper hand. So it's just like people don't get it most of the time <laughs> unless you get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I understand that, man. And my, I, what I'm sitting here because I'm looking at you now. And once you say that you're you like a, a football star or a football nah, player. Okay, I'm like, listen. No, not star, football player. <laughs> I don't want to claim that here. <laughs> <laughs> football player, I'm seeing like, okay, I can, I can see you being this football player and really dedicated. And for somebody, like, when did that, when did that become not an option for you no more where you're going to pursue – uh, football. At what point did you was like? Did you go to college for football? Not for. I got recruited and I uh, had opportunities to get scholarships. I I turned it off in high school, man. Like, I what made you turn it off? I was doing it really, truly for the wrong reasons. Like, uh, it wasn't a true passion for the game, really. Mm. It was just to be noticed at the time. Like. Mm. Um, my living situation, not living with my biological father or my mother um, as a child and just wanting to be valued to a sense, uh, you know what I mean? And so I went harder to be the best because I know everybody want to be associated with the best. Mm. Or You know what I'm saying? And so once I came to my senses, so to say, I was like, this ain't really what I want to do. I was just, you know, acting out. But productively acting out right you know what i mean yeah to where the result was like i was a dog mm. but the reality is i ain't never want that like the, the status that came with it i ain't really accept that well either like i was real modest low-key quiet you know what i'm saying but people just knew me because i was like one of the best people in my area yeah know? it's kind of interesting huh? it is <laughs> and so super, i went to college actually man and they like the coach came and actually got me from the stands of the spring game and he knew me because I went to the the what is it the camp summer camps and mm-hmm. I was like a top performer ran like the fastest 40 like I was just been doing good there and he remembered me he knew me because they was recruiting me and he came to the stands and was like Lowry that's my last name mm-hmm. and he was like uh man you gonna I still got a spot for you man 
I really want you to play, man. You need to change your mind. And I end up playing because he, he talked me up. What school was it? You, ULM, University okay. of Louisiana Monroe. Okay. And um, I end up playing, actually, like, because of that. Mm. For a small period of time, and then I got I checked out, so, got so, back to my senses, man. So, <laughs> <laughs> so hold on, you was in the stands. I was watching the spring game. You was watching the spring game. The coach. Oh, it might have been summer game or summer, summer game, yeah, whichever whatever. one. Yeah. The coach came to the stands and told you, "Hey, I want you to come on the field and play." Uh, it was after afterward we were leaving, like everybody was leaving. The players have an opportunity to mingle with people because it's not like the real season right and i was amongst the players like down by the uh stadium interest where the football players go mm-hmm. in and the coach i knew him and so it was afterward but yeah he was like hey man hey come here like come we, play i yeah. still got a jersey open a locker open if you want to play you just let me know give me a call and uh, i end up playing Really? <laughs> I'm, dead, I'm dead serious, man. Man, shout out to Coach Apple. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's how that happened, man. And you and played I, how many years? Uh, I did two, but I ended up really – I ended up stopped playing, then I ended up going back and playing again. I was like – Indecisive. Yeah, yeah, about. yeah. Because once I put in so much work with football, to be honest, it's like, damn, it was kind of different adjusting to life without it. Mm. Going to school, knowing, understanding now that I didn't even, I wasn't ever doing it for me anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, I was, like, challenged. It was more, like, emotionally, like, man, dang, I really do like football. I've trained myself to like it. I put in so much work, it's like I got a certain commitment to it mentally. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm supposed to do this. I put in this much work, and but then I, I didn't do everything I had to do. Like, you know, yeah, because I wasn't all the way bought in. So I got there. And when you get to college, it's not like you got to start over. And if you want to be the best, you got to become the best all over again. The talent level is is higher. So you don't just walk in most of the time and you just like that guy. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? I was going to have to put in a certain level of work again to become the top of that. Yeah. And I was like, as I got more uh, acclimated with the schedule and how life look as a college ball player. I'm like, dog, ain't no way. <laughs> 5.30, uh, <laughs> don't get back to 7 after, if you got study hall at 8.39, like you live, eat, sleep, breathe football, man. That's why I feel like players should get paid. I'm one of the pay, pay players to people. <laughs> like, yeah, man, it's a job, they get, man. They people don't, now. They people don't realize, now. boy, that's a real job, man. Like yeah. a real deal. You got to think about everything you do in football before you make a decision. Yeah, golly. Yeah, man. And that's crazy. What if you would have got What if you would have got NFL people talking to you and your heart wasn't in that? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's, that's why I had to stop. Like I had to stop because the reality of it too is like I'm taking somebody's spot because they let me be on a team and I'm going through the motions every day. And that's really not fair. Mm-hmm. You know, like if I ain't going to give it my all and, and y'all putting y'all time in, I'm like, we wasting time. You know what I'm saying? I'm wasting somebody's spot. I'm wasting my time. I know that I will not go pro under any circumstances. Why? I just didn't love football enough to, once I saw what it took to be a college player, I was very uninterested in becoming a professional player. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, what, man? I got to do this? Ain't no way. I don't have to drive that much. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And so I knew I needed to let it go. I held on to it a little too long, to be honest. Mm. Um, but I knew I needed to let that go, man. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. It wasn't even crazier, man. Um, my high school robber was Dak Prescott. So I knew Dak from high school because we played and we was like the top two teams and stuff like that. And like um, he from Louisiana, yeah, man. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't know Dak was from Louisiana. And so you know, uh, even my senior year, like the last game of my senior year, it was the biggest game in Bolger Parish, our parish uh-huh. ever, because we was both undefeated playing for the district championship, and it was it's it's crazy. You know? Really? Yeah, man. Like I like um I want to say pictures probably from like Shreveport Times uh, magazine and stuff where they had like the top players in the town in the, in the state or in that area 318 and I was on the front of the page with Dak and everything like I probably could go find it and send it to you I really was okay 
you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was okay. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't all that, man. Yeah. Damn. So when does uh oh <laughs> When did when did when did music come in into play? I've been doing music the whole. I was always a writer, man. Like that's how I expressed myself as mm. a child. You know, I wouldn't say it was music initially. It was just writing poetry and stuff like that. And then it just turned into doing music as I got older. Some of my high school football teammates had equipment to record. Mm. We started recording for fun. Then started recording more fun than I got my own stuff and recorded through college t- still even while this football stuff talk like here and now I record and it just kind of kept it stayed with me that's one thing that stayed with me that's how I know that's my biggest passion mm. like writing it's because it's been expressive and that's why earlier in this conversation yeah where you like it's about the best verse I'm like for me it was never that it was like a, a, a way to express and uh, maybe create a concept or get a point across. So it, I ain't always writing to write the best verse. I might be writing to make you feel this as a father. I might be writing to make make you want to be a better husband and make you go love somebody or something. Like you know what I'm saying? And so that when it's from that angle, I'm not just like, what's the best bar I can put right here? Got it's like, you. How do I make you feel this the most? Like you know what I'm saying? How mm. does this how does this make you feel? You know gotcha. what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I like that. Now, now is is bringing context. Now it's tying into yeah. everything. Why? Yeah. Why it's not like big macho sport every time I do it? It's yeah. Like, no, no, no. I started with it being just a way to express how I felt without verbalizing it. Because you know, in our households, that's not a thing really. Uh, in most black households, you don't just get to say how you feel get popped Shit, in your my mouth so <laughs> little kids you say whatever the hell they want well, to well i mean you know what i'm saying now i'm saying probably when you was yeah, younger yeah, you yeah. Know, today is way more accepted to and and the consequence can't be as harsh yeah <laughs> you'll lose them yeah. you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> you know as you go a little bit further back i ain't as old as some people who deal with worse but it's like we got whoopings yes the real deal yeah. Popped in the mouth. We got yeah. punched in the chest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, got, yeah. we got all that, man. Man, okay. So now now when I go and listen to the records, I'm I'm gonna be listening with a different ear now. You know what I'm saying? That, that's usually how I go. Yeah. Well, that's the first thing I have a, a greater understanding of my logic and how I'm thinking move. Yeah. I've realized that they appreciate the music more. That's why sometimes these type of things where I get to talk and people get to hear, they be like, Oh, th- that's that makes sense now. Yeah, it makes sense. Like you wouldn't understand. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I understand yeah. you don't understand, and I'm cool with it. You yeah. Know? Until you do understand. Yeah. It, then you'll get it. <laughs> Godly. That's dope, man. Yeah. That's super dope. Whatever happened with the uh, the record with you and Bebe? Oh, I still, we, so it's released. It's called Picture Me. It was on that project from last time I talked to you. But we waiting on time to, to release, like, I guess in a bigger aspect with the video and mm-hmm. the cuz I remember you showed me some video stuff that y'all was shooting, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I had posted it as well like yeah. um just like little clips or pictures of being behind the scenes. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's like that's completed. The video done and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just got to make it make sense. You Jeez. know, um it's about timing. Mm. Um, you want to have some motions probably in some way or form before somebody that big come out with how how it's put together. It's really big, like this big production, and it's like it's a fire song be. too, man. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. now that's that's the one you got off on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Uh, but I appreciate it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like the concept of that, you know, it was more of a. Even with you saying that, like with the hook and everything, I was very involved in all that writing and putting that together, and so it was very intentional too. But mm. it's not like it came through to you. So, it did. So that's good. It you know did. what I'm saying? It did. <laughs> and it was real. That was all real too. You know what mm. I'm saying? Um, but yeah, we gonna we still got that in the bag. We just I'm creating a little bit more motion, doing a little bit more, just trying to be in a certain position so when we drop that, we don't miss. Because mm. the thing is, you know how that can go when you, you really want to seize that type of moment and opportunity. Yeah, that momentum, too. And, and he got to also, he don't have to. What he would probably prefer is if he's going to do something like that with an artist from where we're from in a similar area is make sure that everything is 
together on my end because it's almost like a cosign and a vouch. Mm-hmm. Like I'm standing behind this and this is the story and da 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 da. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to say too much about yeah, everything because yeah. it's not out for yeah. a reason. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's going to be major, yeah, but man. But we still talk, you know what I'm saying? We talked not too long ago. I think right before the BET Awards this year and everything. Yeah. That's going to be dope. That's oh, gonna yeah, be yeah, yeah. Dope, it's, yeah. It's just putting in, working, and doing what all the things that I do, man, it, it just make it. I'm not like a lot of other artists that you might come across or deal with or see because, like, they are probably more involved in music, so to say, or all in, you know? I'm not as all in because I funded myself through working a normal job, like a career type of job. Then I got these other investments. And so I don't have a big industry bag behind me or, or a big bruh or nothing like that. So mm-hmm. um, my process is just a little different. You know what I'm saying? Like I got to put things in order. And so then I come back over here and then do this. You know, until everything in order and moving how I needed to move, and then I could go all. No, all that's it. smart though. Yeah, that's you that's gotta, you can't that's always smart. you know just be one one thing either. You know. Yeah. So here, here, I'm I'm struggling with that to be honest with you. Yeah. Be- because I've heard it where if you only got a plan A, then you have <laughs> then, then your mind figures out a way to get the plan A to work right, but. Logic will tell me, hey, man, you still got to eat every day. You still got to bills. You still got to take care of yourself. You know what I mean? And so logically, I'm thinking like, you know, I want to make sure that I can eat every day. If I have uh, responsibilities that I need to take care, I need to make sure those are taken care of. But I mean, I guess to each his own in that in that sense, you know, what I mean, where whatever you're comfortable with. You know what I mean? Whether it's just putting all your plans in in plan A or if you balance it where you like, okay, I got to have a solid foundation where I know I'm good and then I'll take some of this money and fund my hobby or something I'm passionate about. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think my, my idea of that is like I get it and it does make sense and I kind of agree with if you have a plan A, you're going to make plan A work if there's no other plan. And that's like a go get it mindset. But that's not my idea of rap. You know, mm. um, I would say first priority of mine, which is why I do everything I do, is becoming free, like financially. Rap, cool. I love it. It'll always be there. But becoming free is number one. Mm-hmm. And so that's why it would seem that. Oh man, he dibbled. If it seemed like I'm dibbling, dabbling in the rap, and over here it's like the goal and objective is to become free within the next five years, and so that is priority. Because I can make all the rap. I can I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want when I'm free, mm-hmm. and that's the objective, man. So uh, for people who may not understand, that's why music come how it come, and when it come, and what I talk about. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I got to get stuff in order to become free. That's way more important to me than being a rapper. Like, being a rapper, cool. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know I can rap, and I know that if you got a message and have timeless songs and timeless content or whatever, you know, that, that can still be relevant five years from now. Not saying that I'm waiting five years, because I'm doing it all at once still. Mm-hmm. But I have to put more into becoming free because that is priority number one so that my kids can do things that I couldn't do as a kid so that my family so that my woman you know what I'm saying stuff like that we can move how we want to move man yeah it's more important than rapping to me yeah 100% man you got kids how many kids you got no nah, I'm just speaking oh speaking like, to like you, I, yeah. I plan to have kids I want to have kids oh okay yeah okay. I'm going to have kids actually got yeah, you. yeah I'm okay. going to have kids okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying okay <laughs> so so yeah that's, but I think about that now without them that's what I'm trying to tell you you know yeah. what I'm that far ahead you yeah. know what I'm saying yeah like I ain't this ain't this bigger than me yeah Way, it's been bigger than me I'm trying to retire my mama I'm trying to retire my daddy and rehire him man like People, they ain't thinking like that. Man. No, that's what's you know what up, I'm saying? Man. Yeah, yeah. You got a girl? 
No, nah, I don't have that either right now. But shit, I shit, you gotta start. <laughs> no, no, I am starting. This is where I'm starting over here, though. <laughs> he said you gotta start. No, no, no. I need to be in a certain place. No, nah, I feel that. You know, I, I'm very disciplined, man. Mm-hmm. I just know I wouldn't give a woman right now everything that she deserve. Mm. Um, not in a not committed type of way, or unloyal type of way. Meaning like emotionally. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like this is more important right now. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get it straight though. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Unless she on everything that I'm on, like, and it's not a takeaway from what I'm doing. Like, if she got she that same build, vision, build mm-hmm. with you. Yeah, like, oh, I'm here, here, here. This is what I want. This is what a family would look like to me. You know, this is what we're trying to get to within the next five years. Da 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 da. Like, all right, you, like, if you get it, then you that on board. We might have something. Yeah. Probably the one. <laughs> what, what, if, what if you meet an artist? How would that work? I probably wouldn't take them serious. Really? I, I, I don't think so. I don't know, man. Why so? From my experience, man, my my encounters with artists just haven't been like a. I haven't been wowed by a lot of people, and I guess I don't work with enough women either, like in a bigger space to mm-hmm. to really really have an opinion on it that way. But I just feel like my experiences so far with artists, they ain't been like, oh, man, you a dope person. Like, yo, we don't align at other places. Mm-hmm. Like, they're probably more focused on being an artist, for example. And, mm-hmm. like, that's the goal, to be a big artist. And uh, that's just not my goal. Like, I, if that's what you're doing, that's probably not going to line up with what I do when we leave the studio. Mm-hmm. I'm probably going to be on this finance stuff, and you're probably not on that. You know, see, probably like, what about what about somebody like 3D Nut T? What man? Get out, come on, <laughs> man! This man on air going. <laughs> what is you doing? No, I'm not saying her. <laughs> yeah, this man crazy. Me, I'm not saying somebody. I'm not saying exactly her, but I'm saying somebody that's like focused oh, like business, her, like how she. Yeah, I, actually, I, I'm gonna flip this a little bit real quick. Okay, okay. I, I think that. It, we kind of similar in a sense in that way because I feel like she the same way as far as like rapping and then being free like she be on the investing mm-hmm. open the business the finance stuff and, and hustling and doing that type of stuff and getting back to music so I think that is a person that I do relate to which is why I wanted to work with her I thought she was dope all it is like that's yeah. how that came about I'm yeah. a fan of her like what she do yeah and so like if I had to run across a person like that where we connect in that way, you know what I'm saying? I would be more open to that, uh, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because kind of on the same type of things. And she, like, full with the community. She, like, she getting a people face, and she is not bigger than people. Right. Real humble. Yeah. You know? 3D. Shout out to Nati. You know what I'm saying? Get him a boy, man. Man, come yeah. on. I ain't saying that. <laughs> Get him a <my> boy, man. <laughs> oh, that dude so crazy, man. <laughs> nah, I, I knew that's where they were going. That's why I said, that's why I said let, me stop. let me stop this beforehand. <laughs> oh, man. Yo, Trey, man, I appreciate you for tapping in with us, man. It's been a pleasure, man. I, I, I honestly don't run, in, run across too many artists like you and... and and just the way your mind works. So it's a pleasure sitting down with you, man. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate you, man. For, for sure. For having me, man. Yeah, absolutely. For sure, man. Yo, man, this has been the Tap In Podcast. Thank y'all for tapping in with us every week, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Um, make sure y'all check out uh, From the Bottom. What is it called? From the Bottom? No, Bottom of the Map. Bottom, bottom of the, of the map, map album. It's uh, on all streaming platforms right now. Trey Low. Thank you again, man, for tapping in with us. All right, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. This has been the Tap In Podcast. Holla.